Hey friends, in April, Serverpod announced their latest version and it's creating quite a buzz in the Flutter community. To help us unlock the full potential of the new Serverpod version, I'll be hosting a comprehensive tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the installation, configuration, and utilization of Serverpod's features. You'll gain practical hands-on knowledge that you can apply right away. During the tutorial, we'll cover everything from setting up your Serverpod environment and dive deep into each feature, providing step-by-step -step instructions and sharing valuable tips and tricks along the way. Serverpod is a backend framework specifically designed for building server-side functionality for Flutter application, an easy to use and efficient way to develop server-side logic and communicate with a Flutter client application, rather than in a case where you have to think of a, you have to understand a language in that can create a backend application like Node.js, Python. What Serverpod has done for us as Flutter developers, it has made sure that our whole project ecosystem revolves around one language, which is Dart, which is really awesome. So that means our Flutter application, we create it in Dart, and then in our backend, we have the Serverpod that allows us to create the server side in Dart. Now let's proceed to look at the capabilities of the server pod before we start interacting with it. Logging. So let's explain logging on a server using the an analogy of a detective's investigation, right? So imagine the server is a, like a crime scene and the logs are the detailed notes and records that a detective takes while investigating the scene. So here, here's how the analogy will play out, right? So when an issue occurs on the server, it's similar to a crime happening at the scene. Just like a detective needs to gather clues to solve the case, server logs help administrators or as Flutter developers gather information about what exactly happened, when it occurred, and any related events or errors. These logs act as a trail of evidence that can be analyzed to identify the root cause of the issue. So back to the detective analogy. Logs are like the detective's notes. They record every significant detail, including errors, warnings, and exceptions, which help in the troubleshooting and debugging process. Like a detective revisiting their notes to connect the dots and find the culprit, as the Flutter engineers analyze server logs to understand the sequence of events, trace the flow of actions, and identify the source of the problem. So monitoring server performance is like detective keeping an eye on suspicious activities at the crime scene. Just as a detective observes the behavior of potential suspects, we monitor server logs to track resource utilization, response times, and other metrics which, you'll, which server port provides in terms of health checks. This helps that identify performance bottlenecks, predict future resource needs, and optimize the server's efficiency. So detective analogy aligns well with the importance of logs in security analysis. Just as a detective investigates a crime, server logs are crucial for identifying potential security breaches, unauthorized access items, or suspicious activities in general. So using that analogy, you can grasp the importance of logs in gathering information, identifying problems, maintaining security, ensuring compliance, and enabling protective measures for server management. Another capability that Serverpod has is built-in caching. So think of caching as a library's reserve section where popular books or frequently requested resources are kept for quick access. So here's how caching will work. When a user or an application requests data from a server, it typically involves some level of processing or querying, right? This can be time consuming, especially when the same data is requested repeatedly or by multiple users. To speed up subsequent requests for the same data, caching is employed. The system temporarily stores a copy of the data in a cache, which is a faster and more accessible storage location than the original acts, the original source. This can be a portion of memory, a dedicated cache server, or even a disk-based cache. So when a subsequent request for the same data is made now, the system first checks the cache. If the data is found in the cache, it can be retrieved and served much more quickly than fetching it right from the original source. This reduces the processing time and improves the overall response time for the user or application.
To ensure the data in the cache remains accurate and up to date, cache invalidation mechanisms are implemented, where the original data, whenever it's modified or updated, the corresponding entry in the cache is cleared out. So this ensures a subsequent request retrieve the most recent version of the data from the original source. So ServerPod uses Redis as its mode of caching, and it's designed to provide fast access to data by storing it primarily in memory, making it well suited for use cases that require low latency and high throughput operations. You can also use Redis independently. You don't have to use it with ServerPod, right? Next is revolutionary ORM. ORM means object relational mapping. So this is a programming technique that enables developers to seamlessly map and interact with relational databases using the object-oriented programming languages that they, are, they interact with. So you have used this before. It's, it acts as a bridge between the object-oriented model used in application code and the relational mo model used in databases. So it eliminates the need of writing the complex SQL queries manually. So you'll find it, in our case, we'll find it in that language. There are inbuilt, what happens, there are inbuilt methods that will help us communicate with the database. For example, you may use a certain instance of the database and pass it the method dot insert or dot find if you want to search. So that's what ORM is all about. It offers query capabilities that abstract the underlying SQL syntax, select all from or delete and all. Developers can use a more intuitive object-oriented query language provided by the ORM framework to retrieve, retrieve data based on specific criteria. And the and ServerPod uses Postgres as the database in mind, and you'll find that we'll need to install Docker to be able to interact with a Postgres database. Next is code generation. ServerPod generates client-side code that seamlessly integrates with the server-side code. This client library provides a convenient interface for making API requests, handling responses, and handling errors. We'll get to see that. And it saves development time by eliminating the need to write manual API communication code. So that will be generated for us automatically. Next it's file uploads. Even though ServerPod is configured for configured to use the database, which is Postgres, uh, for storing files, it may not be efficient for large scale application. That's why it has built in support for handling file uploads to the cloud, currently supporting Amazon S3. And also uses Terraform as uh, Terraform scripts to make this all possible. Next is authentication. ServerPod comes with inbuilt uh, user management and authentication, mainly email, Google, Apple, and Firebase. Another uh, capability is data streaming. It is the data streaming basically means the continuous transfer and process of data in real time, which you, we tend to see it a lot in chat applications. Next is health checks. So. Performing health checks while running a system or an application is quite important and ServerPod made sure to implement that. So it helps us ensure the stability and availability and the reliability of the system by continuously monitoring. And you get to see the all that through their ServerPod Insights, which is a platform where you get to see all that and visualize all that data by and all the health checks that are there. Next is serialization. So serialization basically means the process of converting an object state into a format that can be easily stored, transmitted, or reconstructed. So it involves transforming complex data structures or objects into a stream of bytes or a string representation that can be saved to a file. So the, the, a serialized, the same serialized data can also be deserialized, where it's a reverse process of reconstructing the project object again. So serialization is commonly, the common serialization formats that we have gotten to interact with include JSON, and, they, and others will be XML or message back, and they each have their advantages depending on the use case in mind. And lastly, the last capability is error handling, where it's a process of managing and responding to errors 
or exceptions that occur during the execution of a program or system. So in ServerPod, there are three main concepts that we'll put in mind whenever we are creating our application. And these are endpoints, which is the con refers this this refers refer to the connection points to the server and the client. So what you realize is that we'll have one main project and inside it will have our server code and we'll also have our flat application and we'll have the client code which will be generated automatically for us and it will be the middleware between the server code and our flutter application so what we're going to use to actually communicate between between the, what will be used to communicate between the three entities will be endpoints another thing is sessions so the beauty of uh, the importance of a session uh the session object it provides information about the current context in a method call so every call will have a session passed it provides access to these things that we have talked about like authentication data storage database caching within the server and it's essential because it maintains the state and stores user specific information through multiple interactions or requests and we'll get to see that and lastly we'll have modules which is similar to dat packages in flutter where but instead of um, in our flutter dat packages it focuses mainly on the flutter uh, code or the app uh, or or an application that involves um, installing in a flutter application the package requires you to install in a flutter application but now these modules what will happen it will be containing both the server and the client code and flutter widgets i hope those that make sense so we have talked about our uh, the 10 capabilities of the server pod which we look forward to seeing how that happens and the main concepts that we'll get to mention here and there whenever we are creating our use case so next thing we are going to install our server pod great so server pod provides a clear documentation on how to install uh, so you need two things you need flutter and dart and if you are a flat you've been developing flat application you must already have that and then we also need docker which is the one that will be used to manage postgres and optionally redis so for flat application we already have our flat application uh, currently using there are 3 3.10.1 and also we're going to we already have installed we can actually install the docker from this the link that has been provided just head over there depending on the platform that you're using either mac or windows or linux you click on that you download it and just install it and it will look something like this where we've already created our first uh but we'll get to create our own based on the use case that we're going to be working on. So simp it's simple as that. So once that is done, we'll be able to proceed to the next step where we'll create our application. So see you on the next one.